All right, welcome to Bloom in Full Color, where we live life in high definition. Um, I'm Jennifer Moss. I've got PJ McGuire and Dave Holly with me today. All right, so today we're talking about soil amendment, amendment, amending. Soil I, amendments. I, I, I so combined is that like both those words. <laughs> we the people under the not the twelfth not, amendment, not quite Bill of Rights <laughs> style. Good try though. I appreciate the humor. Um, no, okay. So, what's the most important part to a garden? Your soil. The soil. Every time. What's the most important part of the house? The foundation. Because if you don't have a solid foundation, the son of a bitch is going to fall mm-hmm. over. So, we, you know, when it comes down to people are always chomping to the bit in March, you know, and mm-hmm. we just opened retail and everyone's like, oh, I'm just, I'm so excited. I got spring fever, you know. Oh, there was like seventh winter yesterday, you know, yes, <laughs> whatever is happening. God, I think we're on fifth <laughs> now, but right. I might, I mean, seventh hopefully won't happen the first week of May. Yeah, really. That's all I'm hoping for because that was last year and that was like seventh winter and then we had like three more. Yeah, that doesn't We had help. 10 yeah. winters yeah. last spring. It was terrible. So, What do you do in March? Well, you've already done your seed shopping usually, or you're starting to do your seed shopping. I hope you already did because you can't get it. But let's let's be realistic. Not everybody does. That's true. Like we all know because we're in the industry that you go in January and you get on the seed catalogs and you get what you want. Now, what did I do yesterday? I poached pea and bean seeds and some beets and radishes from retail. (laughs) She's got them. Yep. You know, in DMB, when we don't have it, I go to DMB. Why did you do beets? We grow beets. I want gold beets, and oh. I want them always. And I I love beets. So we don't we didn't do the touchstone good. I gold don't this remember. Year? I just I, I I really I don't like we fighting really with those just beets. Just internal stuff, you know. Yeah, that's right. We do grow beets. Um, <laughs> I there's some stuff that I just plant with seed. It's a habit I have. Yeah. I don't ever grow grab our beets and plant them, which is funny now that I say that out loud <laughs> on a podcast recorded. <laughs> I don't take our flowers. <laughs> no. So I just, I plant beets from seed. And same with like, because I always plant them next to my carrots. And then mm. I'll, I will grab our onions. Creature and I'll, habit is what exactly, you're Exactly. I am yeah. definitely a creature yeah. habit on a couple of plant yeah. things. <laughs> it's, it's a couple of, like the tomatoes. I'll always like have this grandiose plan of these are the only tomatoes I'm going to grab. And then when I go to plant, I was like, you only had space for eight and you have 17 here. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> you know? So I got, I got bad habits to break too. <laughs> so um, soil is is the thing to worry about now. Now, let's cover the first thing that we need to. Idaho soil is challenging. And I, I'm looking to both of and you. And you are, <laughs> and you're being nice. I'm you being know, very nice. Um, so we coming have- Coming from where I come from, Idaho soil is real nice. Not that it doesn't still oh, have its fair. challenges, but where I come from, Las Vegas is yeah. like growing plants this on the face true. of the sun. This, yeah, Honest to God. <laughs> so Idaho soil, yeah. although it's it still poor- Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got way better soil than some other people. Yeah. True story. Okay. True story. Well, but it's still crappy. That's not-, not No, they're me. saying that Idaho soil, for the most part, because of the volcanic- Mm-hmm. region that we are in mm-hmm. is actually very good soil. Right? It is. But it, it's how you prepare that soil, which I think you're trying to get. Well, at. and I'm talking about pH too. Yeah. So you've got yep. high pH. millions of years of a salt shelf down by our aquifer that has adjusted our pH to be very high. Mm-hmm. So it can come out of the ground anywhere from seven and a half to nine and a half in this area. Right. Plants like five and a half to six and a half. <laughs> yep. So how do you adapt your pH in your soil? So interesting. Sulfur. I, I have a couple, Sulfur's so, the answer. Sulfur. Okay. There Sulfur. You go. One answer. There you <laughs> go. I like it. <laughs> Let's not lose the answer. It doesn't the matter what the answer is. Sulfur. Sulfur. It's sulfur. Okay. So now <laughs> tag well, your it. I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, we got to say that. Gypsum is another way oh, to gypsum. change yep. the pH. Right. Um, a stri- a sulfuric acid, which is what sulfur, sulfur. turns yep. into in the yep. ground once you put it in the soil or water. And be very careful if you're working with sulfuric acid. And sulfur for that matter, to tell and, you the truth. So. And, and you want, um, isn't there a specific kind of sulfur to, to use? It's like you go into a gardening store and get the garden sulfur. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You and want- then to be fair, a lot of the fertilizers that are currently available have sulfur as the coating. Right. So That's sulfur fair. coated urea, you can do all of this in one application if you really want to get fancy schmancy. What's urea? Uh, a nitrogen source. Nitrogen. Okay. Yeah. So okay. sulfur coated urea is a slow release nitrogen. Yeah. So you got sulfur on the outside of the prill, helps acidify this your soil. Is, again, why these two are here. So, I don't know this as well as you so guys do. So we're saying this is this is what you're adding into your ground. Correct. Okay? So, and this is before you plant anything. Absolutely. Yeah. So for those of us that are a little on the lazy side now, as I've gotten older, <laughs> you know, and uh, I do everything in containers or beds. 
Okay. I'm not going to add all this extra crap. No, you don't have to. You know, don't because have to. if you're doing containers or beds, you're buying a pre-engineered exactly. soil, and that's, which that, is that, already taken care of some oh, of yeah. these things for right. you. Right. That, that, Jennifer that's is an talking about point. amending native Absol- soil. No, yeah, and, and, and I'm talking the flower bed in front of your house. You want right. flowers? Right. I just I'm, want to make sure that everybody understands that you know right. there's there's you, you can do it in ground, and that's no problem, and you yeah, should. You should. But there's other. But if you're do if you're replacing your potting soil in your containers mm-hmm. on an annual basis or a biannual basis, you're fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say if you're if you're a raised bed. One of the the reason you build raised beds is so that you can put in the engineered soil, so That's you right. don't have to fight whatever your native soil is. One, it's an easier way to grow, but two, it's because you have engineered your soil. So it's not because I'm easy. lazy and don't want to bend over no, the that, weed. That's a <laughs> giant <laughs> bonus. That's a I was giant like, that's bonus. I do it. I'm yeah. controlling yeah. the weed yeah. problem. Giant <laughs> bonus. The, the two species, yeah. right? Because yeah. not only is it easier to bend over, two, now you plant much thicker and right. everything goes into one spot, kind of like one of our baskets. Well, and then you can drip tube it. Eliminates way easier. weeds. Right. The whole thing is a beautiful yeah. situation. Oh, you know, yeah. back in the back in the seventies, when all this the the uh, soils came into vogue, really, there was a show on PBS, and I don't know if any, you guys may be too young, and it was called Square Foot Gardening. Okay, this was all done in a. It's in, so in funny a how everything bed. recycles. Absolutely, right? Gosh. but it was in a square bed or in a raised bed, and everything was one foot by one foot. Yep. So you had these these gardens that were just jam packed with everything that you find in it, and it was so cool. And I thought. I want to do that. That's why I've, and I've been in raised beds pretty much ever since. Oh yeah. I went to raised beds. I I did containers heavy, but then I went to raised beds on all my garden stuff and it's hugely Only way to go. Helpful. One, it's able, you're able to really reduce your square footage because a family of six people in one four by eight raised bed will grow more vegetables than their family can eat. I'm six people now. Now, you still got to have a little bit of room because potatoes, you're not growing a right. crap load of potatoes right. in a raised bed. You're not growing, you know, 100 feet of corn. So there are and a couple of weird plant, pumpkins you might not plant. Plant what you're going to eat. Well, that's there a huge go. deal. Although I will tell you, one of the tricks to gardening is. Try something you, new. If a little kid plants kale they'll and grows kale, kale they'll, they'll eat, eat kale. They'll, they'll eat kale. kale. Only way you could get a kid to Even try kale. Even though we've talked about it's the easiest crop to grow and <laughs> impossible it's impossible to give away. To give away. <laughs> You want to know the trick to kale? You got to bruise it and beat the crap out of it. And see, that's, and a, it that's good. a foodie yeah. that has to tell you that. Yeah. I don't yeah. think yeah. I ever did that. Yeah. No, the that's a, that's a foodie to tell you that. You got to bruise it and beat the crap out of it. And then it's like beating your food into submission. And then the kale tastes good. Which is interesting. I just like to pick kales based on names. I like dinosaur kale. It's weird. Sure, I don't right. care. It's it after a pre- I also want, like, I love this new trend. This is total side note. Squirrel. Um, <laughs> everything with little kids now, girls have dinosaur shirts. What? Where were those when I was little? <laughs> you wanted some dinosaur shirts? I, I want adult dinosaur shirts. It's terrible. Um, so for I, those that are adding the nutrients to their soil, yeah, are they keeping the? Because I I've never done this. Okay. okay, I've never I've never added any nutrients. Yeah. Okay, to soil. So, never ever, never well, ever. Okay, wow. so first off, let's talk Maybe about fertilizer what you're from our farm animals when I was a kid. Okay, okay. which is that's yeah. you know that's, that's fertility. Going to give you a little fertility. bit. Yeah, yeah. but you in general, if you're going to add all these nutrients, are you keeping the same bed? So you're just yes. turning that soil and you're just Every adding year. that extra. So Every year. so interesting. Is, so my schooling is modern farming techniques, right? So I'm, I'm familiar with the what you can go to a Home Depot and buy, right? This is what I was trained in school. Mm-hmm. And then I managed professional landscapes for years. So, so you're still doing those. When I started growing organic vegetables for the farmer's market, I completely did a paradigm shift on how we do this. And, and the reason I, because I want to talk about it, because it's interesting, because there's two trains of thought. It's current technology based right i'm going to bag or buy a bag of nitrogen right. i'm going to put that down in right. my farm i chose to do some studying some research on old school in other words mother nature yeah. mother nature doesn't till it per soil no mother nature does not no apply till. amendments to six right. and correct right, right? so right. in my head what does mother nature do my mother nature has the healthiest soils in the world right you go under the the evergreen forest mm-hmm. in washington mm-hmm. oregon there's nothing you can't grow right underneath those trees right right so what did mother right. nature do? she didn't till that soil every year she didn't add um nitrogen based amendments every year right so what did mother nature do so we took the tact uh, with our organic vegetable gardens of following mother nature so we did a no till no turn Garden. Did you watch Kiss the Ground on Mm-mm. Netflix? Mm-mm. It is a documentary about the soil of the planet, and they talk about no-till mm. and what it does to the carbon footprint mm-hmm. and modern guys, farming. Yeah. It's un- and and how, how do you lock up um, CO2? Like, how yeah. can you make something on your farm to offset? The thing we, we're, we're looking at is, it, I was doing it from a cost perspective, right? If I'm a no-till garden, I don't have to buy a tractor. Right. I don't have to buy a rototiller. Right. I don't have it. It's it was huge. a way for me to not only grow the nutrients better in food, your soil. Oh my stays god, so much better too and, and because you're not disrupting the microbiome. Because you're still amending. 
Yes. Right. So this is not a this is not a no. But you're amendment. doing crop rotation. Crop you're... rotation. We're using more and what I call the less fast food. So a bag of nitrogen you buy from Home Depot to me is McDonald's. There's food in there. It ain't good food. It's there. It'll get something done, right? It will it's force calories. It'll force growth. It's That's calories, exactly right. But it's harming but, you. It's not hurting. But you. how does that compare it's to not blood meal? Helping you. Which blood meal is a nitrogen source. It's right. an organic nitrogen yep. source, and therefore it takes longer to get into the soil. It takes longer to break down. It's less available to the plants. But hold on. Is that more of a whole food approach to your soil amendments? In other words, is that a spinach salad versus I put some spinach liquid in my shake in the morning? This is one of the things that with the paradigm yep. shift okay. with the, yep. the current stuff was there are two trains of thought to this. Yeah. Old school, how did our grandparents do it? Right. Our well, grandparents had horse manure and, and yeah, rabbit absolutely. manure and chicken manure. That's their amendments. Right? So we had, yeah, I, growing up, about an acre's worth of land, right? And we had pigs and cows, so we would put the manure in every season. Right. A little bit of, of sand. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we would mix that in really good, and then we would plant. Yep. And then it was up to us kids, there was five of us, to make sure that we were you know, pulling the weeds and getting all the vegetables out that we needed to and, and all that. And that's how I learned. And you said, well, you're working in an industry, you should know better. Well, no, my degree's in business, not in yeah, necessarily right. in, in I, I ground. I didn't go to you know, for soil science, <laughs> Right. But that's how we were taught in the 70s, and that's how they were taught you know, in the 50s. And Guess what? And so it's on. not wrong. The, the change is how do you, do, how do you manage 15,000 acres? That's where a, 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 a super sack or a 2,000 pound bag of, of liquid yep. your, or urea comes from is managing at scale, right? No one needed these when it, when you're, when it was all family farms. We all had chickens. We all had ducks. We all yeah. had goats. You had everything. We had everything we, we needed right, right there. Right. When we sold all those farms and Cargill bought the 150,000 acres, right? That's when they said, well, how do we commercialize it? Yeah. This is where the big, the big uh, commercial fertilizer factories came. It's also when big ag started. Well, to, to be thing. fair, it's how you feed a planet that's 7 billion people, right? I mean, yep. almost we, eight. We, like how do you increase food? Because we don't have any more land. We don't have any more water. In fact, I would say we have less water, right? So how do Actually, you- Actually, I have a fact for you. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so water, I've always, you know, i have an engineer for a father and a grandfather. Uh, there is exactly to the drop the same amount of water on this planet as there was when there was dinosaurs. It's a closed cycle. Think about it. Uh -huh. It's you're, coming you're out of the ocean, yeah. into the clouds, yeah. back yeah. to the ground. Yeah. It's the same cycle. And there's way more well, people. It, it, and, so, and I, I know I'm getting a little wacky. Food, but not lawns. You're the same people that take, if the, tell if the ice caps melt or the, the glaciers melt, the, the ocean will rise. Yeah. They're in the goddamn ocean, <laughs> right? If I put an ice cube in the in the bathtub, it doesn't go higher when an ice cube melts. Same water on the planet that's yeah. been here. It's, it's the exact same right? I'm, I'm thinking about California recently, right? I can't remember the number. It was like 37 trillion gallons of water has fallen on California in the last X amount of uh, weeks, right? With all these storms. Well, it was 37 those, trillion. Those drought years when all the it evaporated, yeah. it's yeah. just Correct. part of the cycle. Well, and what do we do as humans? That goes right straight back to the right. ocean. We didn't catch it. Right. No. We didn't keep it. We couldn't, in fact. There's yeah. no way to store yeah. 37 trillion no. gallons. But it's a closed soup loop, right? Basically, our planet is a greenhouse and a glass, right? Is yep. it? Yep. Has anybody yep. ever bought those things, right? Where yep. you plant the plants, yep. you put it and never touched again, right? Right? It generates its own moisture by the plants it's its evaporating. Own biosphere. That's right. Right. That's planet Earth, right? Yeah. We literally have a covering on our round ball, and nothing changes. No, nothing changes. Not really. It moves, yeah. right? It might go from There's area to area. And adapting, right? And it's like butterfly effect, you know. Right. A butterfly flaps its wings in California, and there's a tsunami in Japan or whatever. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. There's. I mean, yep. there's a there's a ripple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's how. So it works. If, if, when we're looking at the nutrients and all that, you know, and my goal here is when I retire is to do hydroponics. Mm -hmm. Okay. On a supply farmers markets and things like that, yeah. right? And have like an acre of cut flowers. Beautiful. Okay. Well, Flesh I'm not going to cut. Sort of. I'm not going to do cut flowers in a raised bed. I no, I'm going to no. put that in the those ground. Should be, no. Those should be cost, so it's, cost prohibitive. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I need to. You need to grow farming on that. Yeah, that is cost yeah. prohibitive. If we're talking about, it, I'll give you a couple some hints. If you're doing pH adjustments, that needs to be done in the fall, because you want months worth of that amendment to get, sit in the soil. I didn't yeah. know that before you plant. Absolutely. You can still do this in the spring, but then you can. mark your fall when but you pull ideally, the crops out. Correct. Then you want to do it again. Are you trying to grow blueberries around here? Blueberries are, are an acid-loving yes. plant. Okay. We yeah, yeah, he always is buying stupid blueberries. I, so do. I, I do. I have six at my house. 
I have six blueberry oh. plants at my house. That, you guys that, are like I bought blueberry hanging Idaho. baskets. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, that, you know, so beautiful. it was a dwarf. It was a dwarf no, no, blueberry. I hope you didn't sell my oh my gosh! Like... Rolling so far back in my head, <laughs> I have told everybody do not plan on blueberries in Idaho. No, but, well, so listen. Most you're people, both dressed as a blueberry. Most for God's people sakes. Tr- put the wrong plant in the wrong place <laughs> right. and then spend ten years complaining about how right. they can't make it grow. <laughs> right. Blueberries that, are one of those you're, things. You're not wrong. Blueberries <laughs> are one of those things. It's the wrong plant in the wrong spot. Absolutely. Can it work? Did your grandmother plant a lemon tree at her house and kept it alive for twenty years? Maybe. In California, it's the wrong goddamn spot. So, <laughs> so it works not yeah. very well. Right, yeah. so this is one of the tricks to soil amendments. If you plant the right plant in the right spot, you can really reduce your amendments Absolutely. because you're not forcing it to do something it doesn't. Absolutely, want to do, right. A big reason for amendment, and what most of us have problems with amendments, it's cost prohibitive. Yeah, perfect example. If if I did a soil test on our lawn here at Moss Greenhouses, right, there that would come back and tell me they wanted me to apply twenty five thousand pounds per acre of gypsum. To offset the pH. That that's literally what a soil test looks like. Right? And you know what we say? Who's got that money? Yeah. It's not in the budget. Yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. So amendments are a weird thing, is is you can almost never afford everything you no. need. It's what can I do to get me a decent crop? Well, and what, what, what crop you are you planning it? to do? Right. And then take a look at that rather correct. than going on a well, so I need all this. Let's, if it's let's not dig do into that. All right. So we've covered containers. Mm-hmm. You're just refreshing your potting yep, soil. Right. You're not taking the soil from your flower bed and putting it in there. Please don't do that. Right. Correct. Just wait for a sale day. I mean, go get a couple bags at the end of the season, store them in the garage, mm-hmm. whatever's mm-hmm. easiest for your budget. Yep. Okay. Because soil, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's cheap, but it's important. All right. Vegetables. How do you approach vegetables? Because I can tell you what I tell people. I'd say half potting soil or half raised bed soil, whatever you've got, or if it's older soil, and then half living matter, so half compost. Hmm. So it has to be live matter, so that's earthworm castings, bat guano, you know, the animal droppings that have a vegetarian diet, you know, because you don't want, you know, cats and dogs. Yeah, because no, no meat eaters. It's, it's what, no meat eaters. what your fertilizer eats. So, hmm. like, what 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 you eat eats kind of idea. So whatever, if it's a cow eating grain, if it's a horse eating hay, that's acceptable. But you don't want something that's an omnivore or carnivore, right? Right. Am I saying that right? 100%. Okay. So you want living matter because if you're doing vegetables, you those vegetables need food. And that's the best way to do it because they're producing food. It's not the same as like a petunia or a you know, pansy bloom. It is you want half living matter. Whether that's a soil conditioner, a compost, whatever's easiest for you. And we are in Southern Idaho. We're in dairy country. I'm not trying to pick on the cows. But if you're getting a compost that's cow-based, you need to check the pH. Because oh, they run hot. It's oh, super And hot, hot means yep. high pH. Right. And you will toast your entire garden for the foreseeable three to four years that it's going to take you to get out of that place. And I, I might be being a little on the left so, side. Well, so what would you recommend then on your raised beds then if you're doing that? So or your old compost. So your old compost. Yeah. If you so are, either you bought it last year yeah. or or I was able to ask my trucker. I said, I don't want fresh. I want, I want last year's stuff. pile. Absolutely. And that trucker stuff. knew where to go to yeah. that dairy yeah. to get yeah. last year's. Because right. last year's, and actually it's not the it pH sits. that's it's hot. Broke down. It's the nitrogen is so okay. high yeah. in yeah. fresh compost. Is right. Well, you could test is what it makes for the it pH, old, and the oh, pH is still high. Okay. 100%. Okay. But okay. that's not what burns. What burns is the it's super the nitrogen. high nitrogen. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you could always tell coming from California when folks would plant their yards, their grass, okay, their lawns. And all of a sudden you had lawns that were burnt. Well, what'd you do? Well, we were told to put fertilizer. Well, what did you do? Well, I went to the, yeah, you burnt the hell out of it. Uh, So let's not forget, (laughs) all, not all, but almost all of the amendments that you're doing to add fertility to your soil are salt-based, every one of them. So what when you over fertilize or you forget to water, what you do, yeah. what you're literally doing is salt burning your stuff, right. right? Why does a dog kill the lawn? Because of the salt the load. And, and and guess yeah. what? As soon as that get a couple days worth of watering and that salt load leaches into the soil, right. then those turn into bright green, green wings, yeah. right? Yeah. So that that yeah. salt load yeah. goes away, the nitrogen that there it starts to feed the plant and you get yeah. the big green spots, yeah. ah, right? Okay. So here's the other thing that I talk about amendments and most people lose the plot. Almost every amendment you apply to the to your garden or your lawn or anything for that matter has to be broken down by bugs. Yes. Almost part, everything we buy yeah. is not readily available to plants. Right. Why is this important? Why does compost help the garden so much? There's a bunch of reasons. One, you're Bring adding organic material. Right. Right. So down. you're increasing the tilt of your yep. soil. You're adding oxygen. You're adding organic. 
the big reason that compost helps your garden because it has a very small nu- nu- nutrient load as well. You get it a really does. You test it and you're like, that's not enough. It, it, it made a huge difference. It's the bugs. Why compost helps your garden? You are adding a huge component of think probiotics. We were just yeah. talking about kombucha, yeah, we right? You're adding bugs and bugs are the key to everything. And, and you're not going to see the bugs when you look at no, it. When I say bugs, I'm talking about microorganisms. Micro. I'm talking about bacteria, you fungi. You, yeah, cannot you cannot see cannot this. See it. You, correct. We talk about the same bugs in our guts, right? When we're talking yeah. about kombucha and prebiotics. It's the biological little guys that do all the work in our bodies and right. in our gardens, right? So this is one of the reasons that you don't apply fertility in the wintertime. There are no bugs there, awake there. in the yeah. wintertime. So you can't go put nitrogen why you on your should lawn. Not trim plants in well, the winter there's time. There's a couple because, reasons for this. Yeah, you open a cut on a wound. Uh, yeah. Dude, I yeah, didn't. I I didn't trim my perennial garden before fall was over, <laughs> and it's driving me crazy right now. And I can't put the clippers in my hands because I'll toast everything. You could. I think you could do it now. Uh, you what, think? What, the cold is the zeros and the ones right. and the okay. tens. A twenty and a forty is not going to hurt your perennials. It's not. I, my opinion. Okay. One out what, of a hundred. What's it going to matter if I kill something, right? Right. I think like I know I where you can get some. <laughs> True story. But bugs are super important. I, I just s- don't want to kill the peonies I paid for. Yeah, right. And the one I planted for grandma. <laughs> I've been watching. Anyways. So you're, you're, you're talking about the microorganisms and things like in that. In the soil. So there's, there, of course, are other bugs in the soil that you don't want. Ants. Right. You know, where right. it's going to tear things earwigs. up. And earwigs. Well, so, but interesting thing. So, so and earwigs. earwigs, people crack me up about earwigs because everybody freaks out. One, because there's usually a crap I load of them. I just don't like that they eat all my favorite flowers. Um, earwigs eat bugs, not plants. So when you see earwigs in your garden, they're chasing aphids. They're chasing. How do they eat all my well, passion well, so flower hold blooms on. They, overnight? They eat through stuff. So they make little highways, right? They're chewing a highway through that stem to get from the bottom of the plant to the flower. So they're not huh. actually eating your flowers. They're not actually chewing. They are chewing on your plants. But everybody goes, oh, there's too many earwigs. Earwigs, they're eating the other bugs. Earwigs are carnivores. They're the lions of the bugs. So they're out eating the little guys that you might not see. Know so thy enemy. Most, yeah. it's exactly right. So part of when you're adding amendments, what are you trying to do, right? This is how you don't waste your money. I'm going to figure out how to give them a different feast. Yeah, there you go. And this is I, actually I don't why know, I earwig, earwigs have been a big problem for me since I've moved here. I, I, yes. In do you know what Oregon <laughs> and California, we never had earwig problems. Like I They were around. Here. Right. Absolutely. Agreed. But Agreed. It's, I've got snails mm. all over. Well, the snails... The the old Snails. wives' tale for me is you put a little um, saucer of saucer beer. with beer. Mm-hmm. Well, that works for snails yeah. and slugs. Yep. yep, they're yep. gluttonous like men. Right. No offense. Shh, leave me to out either of you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, people always ask me how do you deal with slugs. I'm like plant a beer in the garden, yep. and they're like, "What?" I'm like, "No, they just open the can, the top, and yep. just they'll just." And then if you really just want to be a mask, just put salt in it and it'll just, be a, it'll be a party. <laughs> they dissolve right there. Uh, right? Yeah. So, um, okay. Earwigs are carnivorous. Ear- ear- earwigs Okay. Are... So I actually keep the roses I hate. I don't like roses. I'm a weirdo. I'm fine with that. Everybody else, enjoy your roses. Don't care. Right. I leave these three stupid rose bushes that I can't get out. <laughs> I've tried um, with a three quarter ton truck. <laughs> the only thing I haven't gotten is a bobcat or a freaking backhoe. <laughs> um, I'm afraid to mess up the sprinkler system that's archaic at 70 years old at my house, and I'm just not ready to deal with that. And um, I leave the roses there because they ke- catch all the aphids. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. host plant. So, yep. Yep. yeah. Yep. And if you're having a bug issue repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly, they're probably in your soil. Hundred percent. So when you're talking soil amendment too, you need to also be aware. Do I plant the same thing there every year? Like, do I get budworm on petunias every single year in the same spot? And Maybe you should move the petunias. And I was just saying, guess how many years petunias have been planted in that exact spot? Oh, right. Fifty yeah, years yeah, before years. you bought that house, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Fifty years before you bought that <laughs> exactly. house. Exactly. Petunia. We talk about rotating. Nobody rotates yeah. a bedding no plant. No flowers. No. Correct, no right? Flowers. We rotate tomatoes, we rotate cabbage. Who rotates petunias? I don't know. It's the rotate. only thing that looks good in June. Give me some petunias. <laughs> right? And you can't figure out why the bugs. Oh, my God. Yeah, right. oh my God. Do you have this red geranium? I only do this red. And I'm like, well, I have these other 17 reds. But no, I don't have that one. No, no. What do you like about this red? Is right. it the size of the bloom? Is it the color? What is it? Well, I need Ferrari red. You must live and catch them. Got <laughs> it. So, <laughs> so in the in the in the soil amendment world, yeah. you know, we we have a retail shop and the such. Who should our customers be talking to about this? That's a great question. So, um, our crew is actually in retail is all trained mm-hmm. on soils. I was going to say. So they actually go through a training. With the rep yep. and um, the the staff that's been with us a little longer really knows it a lot. But 
the best. I mean, the many, the, many years experience right here in the Magic Valley. Exactly. And most of the people that work for us are gardeners. And so they know what works for them. And truly, it is still a microclimate situation. Mm-hmm. So you just bought a new house and you weren't moved in completely last right. last go of right. gardening. So you, and you were still in containers. Well, say you want to put a hedge of raspberry bushes because you're now a berry. Yep. You're, you're in stock with Driscoll's the berries. berries. That I pulled out last year. <laughs> so with that, you know, you might have to be like, okay, what was in this soil? And so... It's it's always a learning experience. So I moved to the house we're at. I got s- certain areas that I'm just like, what the hell is the deal here? Mm-hmm. Well, I have evergreen bushes f- freaking everywhere. I have pulled a ton of <sighs> them out. I am not an evergreen lover. I'm going to just talk about all the plants I don't like today, I guess. <laughs> and um, I, I'm finding that where I pull out bushes, that, that soil is greatly affected. Mm-hmm. There's certain things I cannot put there. And, you know, that could be too high in nitrogen it could be that it's completely depleted there's never been any amendment to that area it could be that there's a freaking sewer under it i I mean there's a thousand different things and so you have to be able to experiment so if something's not working in an area it it very well is probably start with your soil and you can do a soil test you can call the university of idaho um, extension agents they'll come out and actually help you with the soil test that is an awesome free resource. Mm-hmm. So let me let me say that I mm-hmm. I'll, I'll talk up Andy West and his team over at the the Twin Falls. Uh, yep. Oh man, U of I so Extension good. it and University of Idaho is just what's close. It, wherever you are, your extension agency. First off, they run master gardener programs. I'm technically a master gardener. I don't tell very many people that because in the industry, that's not a good thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a gardener, it's totally a good thing. And the only reason is they're was a couple of really proud people for an amount of time and nobody's memory has forgotten them. And so, no, I love the Master Gardeners because they have tons of great questions. They're really good advocates for 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 the product. And so I think we're, we're breaking the stigma a little bit. But with that, you can call them. Master Gardeners, in order to maintain their certification, actually have to do office hours and answer the public's phone calls and go to their house and help them. So you need help with pointing out what you need to deal with on a tree because you're half the branches don't leaf up correctly. And you're like, what's going on here? Well, you might have a disease. You might have a, a tree bore. You know, hey, I've got this circular ring of mushrooms in my yard. What's going on? Oh, that's called a fairy ring. And this yeah. is what this is. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I yeah. barely yeah. understand it, but you I kind of. Cool yeah. I, I, yeah, I got, got a cool story about fairy Yeah, fairy rings are a little bit mystical yeah, and it's totally, cool. it's totally a natural <laughs> phenomenon. But there's... There's all these things that'll happen in somebody's yard and they're just like, what the hell do I do? Mm-hmm. Well, call your extension agent because yes. they're going to help you. Well, they're just, local. They they're have local. the local knowledge. They understand it's not the a area. guy in New York telling you about your plants. And it's volunteer time. They're not going to charge you. Right. That's a big deal. And we need to make it clear that just because that you're calling somebody out doesn't mean that you don't know what you're doing. Because oh, no, sometimes it just takes somebody a little bit smarter than you, oh. than me, to make sure that this is happening. And it's the joy of the harvest or the joy of the look. Don't let the little things, because this is this is a little thing. Yeah. You know, I get learned you, a long time ago, being a professional is not knowing everything. <laughs> it's knowing who to call to ask for yeah, answers. Yeah, that's what I learned that's with Master Gardener. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd like... It taught me everything I don't know. Right. But it gave me all the resources when I have a question. Right. I still, to this day, suck terribly at trees. I know that there's evergreen and there's deciduous <laughs> and one of them loses <laughs> leaves. That's about it. I don't really care. I'm going to blow your mind because I'm going to introduce you to a, a <laughs> evergreen or a, a green needle tree that loses its leaves. That'll blow your mind here in a little bit. Okay. Just in case. I learned know. about a patented variety created up in Bonner's Ferry, Idaho, by um, her name's Cassie, and she owns Circle C farms i believe and they have um grafted a lodgepole and patented it that grows compact but still bushes out mm. the right way i'm not saying it correctly but they have patented their own lodgepole in the state of idaho that's kind of cool yeah, yeah. So i was like that's badass that's like cool. so there's cool things happen in the state all the time that just people don't know about hey the one thing that moss greenhouse just does that you guys you know viewers don't know about we grow potatoes from petri dishes Mm-hmm. every fall for University of Idaho Extension, actually, for Don McFarland and his team. And it's so cool. We were actually part of some of the development, and this is a separate company we're working with, um, of the Huckleberry Gold potato that you're seeing in the grocery stores. Right. We actually were sexting potatoes and keeping all the bumblebees out because so, we had yeah. to keep control all the 
the parts. And yeah. uh, <laughs> potatoes are a trip. I don't potatoes know if you guys are wild. So w- when I when I came when we moved back to Idaho and we started going for the for the farmers market, I was trying to source seed potatoes. Well, guess what? Idaho does not allow you to ship in potatoes. No, you have they to be very not. certified, they have to, be certified. Right. to play with us. Well, when I'm calling the people that were certified to ship in Idaho, the guy goes, "Do you want?" pre-nuclear or nuclear potatoes. And I go, <laughs> Excuse me, huh? what? What you talking about? <laughs> they have plant stock in the lab before we started testing nuclear bombs on this planet. They still have those potatoes in the lab and are happy to cut them off and grow them for you. Oh, I want nuclear And they nuclear will deliver genetics to you that were that were existed before we started playing with nuclear bombs on this planet. That's crazy. Is that kind of insane? That That's was insane crazy. to me. Yeah. I've been growing those same potatoes for six years. It was interesting because that was a seed stock potato. It makes a bunch of little ones. Mm. Right, so That's instead of awesome. making the fatties, yeah, you, you buy these pre-nuclears, ones. and they get what farmers call single drops. Right, so instead of having to cut stuff up, that it's just it makes perfect seed potatoes, and that was what the pre-nuclear is for, mm. is to generate your own seed stuff. Crazy. Mm. And I want to circle back real quick because I don't know. I'm sure he's going to access fairy ring. I got a cool yeah, story tell me about, about fairy. so fairy rings. If you guys don't have fairy rings, are the green smoke rings in your lawn? You will usually see it on a kind of a yellowed out area of your lawn, and they're irregularly shaped green circles that may coalesce into one, or there might be multiple little guys. It is a sign of a fungus that lives in the soil. Okay, insert fairy rings. You know, it's the, really the, it's the, a cool the, picture if you see it. it but is here, cool. Here's the story. You just Google it. The weirdest one that we know of is like somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. The fairy ring itself is like eight miles wide. The one ring, wow. eight miles, and the mushrooms that I've grow on it this. are like seven hundred pounds. Oh. My creative it's mind is already going. Let's see, fairy rings, fairies. There's a story here somewhere. Oh, there's a story. Yeah. There's <laughs> a there's a creative creative <laughs> fiction a story. story happening yeah. for sure. Anyway, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, with this, I so, took. Soil, your homework. What do you want to plant there? What do you need to do to the soil? Quickly, so I think what people lose their plot on the amendments are amendments are a lot of them can be done in the fall. So most of us are so busy in the spring, it's really hard to do all the stuff we're supposed to do. And yet in September, we're kind of petering out our our garden. So the one thing I say, people in amendments, start thinking about it at the end of your gardening season, not the beginning, because many of the pH amendments need to be down months before you plant so that the acidification can happen while there's not a baby plant in the soil yeah. hanging out next to it, right? So many of these amendments can be put down well in advance. And in fact, you have to, to get blueberries to work around here, you amend the, the pH right. in the fall. It's not spring when it's growing. It so needs you're to be saying amended. I can't mock him for buying a blueberry basket every absolutely not year. i will take you and show you the six kathy bartholomew the <laughs> farmer's market drum she has giant blueberry bushes in her I house it can be done it's a pain in the ass all nuts <laughs> but that, that's my point so there's two it things is a pain in the ass i want to i want to state that they for all customers are. if you're attached to blueberries know that this is it's the wrong spot not, yep it's not a small project no it is not the right spot so two, two amendments start sooner than you think number one and number two Bugs, bugs, bugs. Like literally in our research and all the years I've been in this business, which now is going on 40, um, we keep circling back to bugs. Bugs are the key to everything. We talk about that with our health. We talk about with our gut health. Bugs control everything. And I, we're talking about the little guys, right? Sorry. The didn't, not the earwigs, the micro bugs, right? The small guys that do all the work on our bodies and, and the ground, the bacteria, the fungi, the, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Bugs are key to everything. So you got to include that as part of your amendments, whether it's coming in a compost, whether you stop by here and buy worm castings from us, whether you make a compost tea and grow your own bugs, bugs are the key to everything. So if you want to reduce your inputs in your garden, have better plants and get more money for your amendments, start a little earlier and focus on the bugs and you'll see much better uh, results from your efforts. Okay. Excellent. Well, I think that's your homework. There you go. There you go. All right. There's well, thank you very much, guys, for listening. <laughs> I can't read and talk at the same time. Not working. Read? Uh, <laughs> okay. So it, thank you for listening. If um, you enjoy us, please go share us, uh, like us, follow us on any of the streaming. Uh, we're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're they're on like 17 others. I can't even list them all. Uh, but yeah, wherever you're listening, if you're on YouTube, um, subscribe to the channel, whatever's easiest for you, and share with your friends. We are giving, a, you know, flowers, food, and food and footsteps approach um, to uh, the area in Southern Idaho. And we thank you for listening. With that, go live life in full color because plain's pretty boring. Thanks, guys. <laughs>